Hello, in this video we're going to look at making an Arnor village house um, at the beginning of the unexpected journey uh, just before the troll encounter they sort of stop at a ruined farmhouse which I sort of made here uh, unfortunately there's no video for this, I made it just for the uh, actual main website so there's a written article on this but it got me thinking about what it would look like before the trolls ruined it and are there any other Sort of arnoring villages still still there, so come up with this, and that's what we're going to be making this uh, video. We're going to have a project difficulty of one, which means you know if this is your first terrain project, this should be fairly straightforward. It looks more complicated than what it actually is. The work involved in it. So let's just crack on and get on with it. So to begin with, for the side wall, which you're going to need two bits of foam that are two inches high and five and a half inches long. That's the simplest bit to do. Next, what you're going to want, want to do is cut a bit that's um, four inches by four inches square. And on the square, mark down two inches halfway across here, two inches across here, and draw a lot of line here and then just going to cut that out and you'll need two of these and these will be the end bits so what will happen is when you attach it together because this is five and a half this is a quarter of an inch you'll end up with a wall section six inches long um, on uh, the uh, egg corner bits here what you're going to want to do is you're going to just put a line here and then put a centre line down here so it's two inches and either side come across a half inch and then get one of these which is a coffee stirrer this is going to what we're going to use for the wooden bean put it just on the line there line it up and then just sort of that be too that's scoring too deeply as long as you can see so you have that there, and then <coughs> line up your, your marks you've made here. And then this section here, you're going to cut out because that's going to be the door. There, that'll be the door. So you're going to cut that out. <coughs> On the um, wall sections, you're going to mark out a window. Uh, come in about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter here. This bit doesn't really matter where you want it, but the important thing is that it's three quarters of an inch here, half an inch high, and then that will mean it's three quarters of an inch here, or half inch square. And you're going to cut like that out. Um, next, <coughs> I think we're going to be working on is doing the brickwork pattern. So the bricks going to be quarter of an inch gap, so you just mark quarter of an inch all up here, quarter of an inch here and with a ballpoint pen just come along scoring lines here but we want a rustic brick pattern so once you've scored them all in just come in with a pen use those as a guide and start drawing some bricks in I want to, the reason I'm not here to look Rustic, you too neat and tidy. So you just do that all the way along, and you've got your brickwork pattern done. Which I'll come back when I've done this one. The brickwork's been scored in now, uh, and now we're going to just roughen up the edges or the, uh, the surface of the uh, wall. We've got three stones that we actually use all natural table. These are perfect just to and just roll them over the foam and the stone will indent make indents so giving it a nice rough surface three different stones I'm using just to give a slightly different texture and pattern some have more bumps and dents in them than others just do it until you're kind of happy with the overall effect it's just so it breaks up the flatness of the surface so you end up with something like that so cut the doorway out 
what we're going to do now is actually add your wooden door on it. To do that, it's just going to be using a uh, off cut off card, in this case it's a corrugated card. You're going to put it behind so you've got enough room around the edge. It'll be stuck on like that. It was, uh, it's easier, I find it easier to do it this way rather than stick it on and then put the planking in. So you're just going to level it up like so and then just draw around roughly where the door is. Then get a uh, coffee stirrer. Uh, so put it against it or use your off cut door, whatever way you feel more comfortable with. Just to get the height of it. A little line on. Get a sharp knife. Okay, just cut it. These coffee stirrers can be quite difficult. But you're going to need four four lengths. So that will go here, like so. Uh, and what we're going to do is glue them here. Glue on. Oh. A little gap in between, so when you paint it, you can see that it's actually wood. said dry if you do have you haven't come to length quite as well as you'd like you can always trim them off at the bottom put those there like so and this would go over well, what we're going to do now is glue, uh, glue, glue the uh, card on Yeah, because you can work in time. Say super cool. Pop that on. So. And you can sort of just move your planks around. Make sure it's uh, flush at the bottom. Put that to one side to let it dry in there. So the windows done in much the same way. So uh, you cut the window out. But with this, you don't really need to put a bit of wood on. So all you're going to do is cut three. Like I'm going to use off cuts of. Well, I've done other projects of coffee stirrers. What we're going to do. On some glue around the back of the window, like so. Just kind of put them in, pull it all. On here, you cut your whole you turn it around. Planks in there. Sort of straighten them up. Fix them up a bit more, you know. Yeah, do that for the other window and leave these to dry. Next up, it's the uh, planking uh, that we're on sort of the, the top part of the house. Uh, to do this, coffee stir again and just cut to size here. And then I've made cut beam go here. So. One that will go here, that. one that will go here, I'm going to glue these on EVA. The design of this is entirely up to you, you can put some angular bits in here. Um, on the window wall, which I've got here, uh, the only thing I would suggest is have one running along the bottom, like so, and then 
don't put anything on right along the edge here but just the middle bit some coming up straight lines it's entirely up to you just have a look at some pictures of some Tudor houses or Tudor style houses to get the idea so I'll get on with gluing these and doing the rest of the timbers on the house that's it took um, beams and the doors in but what we want to do is add a little, little step and using the off cut cut from the door just place it in there decide where you want the step uh, so I've scored it. You can see I'm not going to want to probably make it probably just not too much more than a uh, brick pan. Uh, cool. Okay, along. Want to get some glue? it along here so just glue glue your step in so a little little step PVA glue is clear draw it to okay. so if so it stands up so if it stands up on its own like that, you know, right place. And that is it, we can get assembling the actual building now. So all the uh, beaming work's been done. Uh, one thing I quickly mention about doing the brickwork pattern is you also want to do it along the sides here and in the door bit, uh, recesses and the window recesses here. And we've just got to assemble it now. It's uh, quite simple. Just uh, a bit of PVA down the uh, end here. So, and then what I'm going to do is uh, just come in a millimetre or so, an inch side here. So you got a bit of a sort of steps out a bit. What are going to do? So and then use, if you've got something like this, like the mat, you can use this to go uh, straight. All you're going to do is just glue all four walls and leave this to dry. Right, once this is done, we can uh, attach the roof. The roof is made from a sheet of thin corrugated card, it's just stuff that packaging comes in. A lot of Amazon packages this time of year, so uh, it's almost Christmas, so it's ideal. Normally I don't use corrugated card much for terrain builds, but this for the roof, cheap, easily available and easy to work with. So it's six and a half by six and a half uh, inches, and get down the centre and run it down length where the corrugation goes, just mark up a halfway line. Um, a metal rule along it to help you uh, fold it. I guess mean, what we're going to do is we're going to fold it, possibly score it, but corrugate card, there's no need. That's going to be the uh, basis of your roof, like so. And now we're going to tile it. Well, we're going to stick it on and then tile it. We're going to make the tiles first. The um, tiles going to make, be made from uh, cardboard and they're going to be six and a half inches long by uh, half an inch wide. Uh, it's just like a thin cereal box cardboard. Now what you're going to do is just do a quick rough. Halfway down, just put a line about half an inch wide. Don't measure it because you want it needs to be sort of rustic wood shingled. So just eyeball it roughly by hand, but not going all the way to the end. It'll just be your guideline. And then on the second one, so just starting in half inch, starting a quarter of an inch, do roughly half inch lines. You've got a staggering pattern going on. Made it easier to draw the lines and then cut them. 
and then the next one you do would go back to being starting at half inch, quarter inch, half inch. What you're going to do is just going to do them all. I'm going to just show you scissors rather than knife to come into a little cut of that, like that. Sort of making little decisions like so. Along rough cuts again it's to be not the best craftsman, but the farmhouse will be made by the farms themselves. So the fact they've been weathered for a long time. Make your little cuts like that, so you have these. So then what you want to do, some of the tiles, not by much, but trim. Them down to be straight, sort of knock yourself out. Some of them aren't all the same, same sort of height, same sort of size, Things like that. And that's going to be your tail, so you'll need a load of ones like this. starting with that half inch in, and then some a load. Like a quarter of an inch in. I'd probably recommend just making a load of these depending on how many houses you have. Ten per roof per side, so 20 altogether per house. So make a load of those and once the roof's glued in place, they'll be uh, glued in here, but we'll get to that stage next. Sit, sit there, like so. I'll get making these uh, and we'll assemble the house, glue the roof on and do the tiling. It's now that dry. I'm just going to stick the roof on, which is uh, made it earlier. Quite easy to do. Glue, glue it up here. So, a bit of glue. Here, just hold it here, but much, much here. Plenty of blue on the ends here. That's it, all you're going to do is stick the roof on, and then we're going to tie it afterwards. Sure you've got a bit of overhang on either side. And here, a bit of overhang there. Pretty the overhangs fairly even. And yeah, that's it, you just let that let that to one side, let it dry. When it's dry, we'll do the tiles. Have the roof glued on, house assembled roof glued in, glued on even, and we're just gonna start tiling now. See what we're going to do is stack the tiles using 18 tiles. Uh, first tile, you're just going to want to put some glue just along one half of it. Because this bit is going to overhang, so uh, glue it on like so. And so the overhang is about Halfway out, halfway out there. That's cool. Push down, and now for the next tiles, put glue all over them. So, all over them, because you want these bits to glue on. Oh, dropping it. And then that bit just goes on. Halfway sort of point. So, and you then just go work your way up between the tiles, you end up with a bit of a half inch gap, which you'll see when I'm done. The roof's all tiled now. See here, there's only one more bit to do now, and that's just put the ridge tiles along the top. These are made in a similar way, uh, it's six and a half inches across. And the card's one inch thick that you just then 
fold in half and cut out your tiles and that will just be glued on on here like so and then that's the construction for the main building part done all we've got to do now is make a chimney which we'll get on with now the final part of the build is the chimney and this is made from a uh, one inch by one inch bit of uh, polystyrene and it's two and a half inches long uh, the picture of the roof you've made it to the guide is 45 degrees now you can either use a protractor or because it's one inch by one inch just a little one inch mark up here and then angle it off like so and cut that out and you're left with something like this what you want to do now is put in the brickwork pattern to come down more of an inch like so quickly just do do here just show you what you're going to want to do is say put a line in here and you're going to match up the bricks on the other side like so and say on this one carry on doing the line Off. So that's a long one there. So here you just make it a little good piece. So you got something like that. So I'll carry on doing this. I'll come back. Hands all in. What I'm going to do now is just grab a rock. Just add a bit of a some texture into it. This yes. bit like we've done for the main part of the uh, main part of the walls. Just like so. You got some texture detail in here, like the main wall. Uh, what we're going to do now is on the top, just draw a little square in. It'll be the actual chimney. And join the uh, join your brickwork pattern up here. So, and now we need to cut this hole out. Let's do that. What we're going to do is slice through this bit here and easily cut that out. So I'm going to use the hot wire cutter. So I'll set that up and show you how to do it. To do the next bit, I'm going to use a hot wire cutter, tabletop hot wire cutter. If you're interested in terrain, this is invaluable, especially because it makes cutting foam so much easier. But you can do it with a knife or a handheld hot wire cutter. Anyway, what we're going to do is on this top brickwork panel, we're just going to slice through this. Now you've got to remember which way up it goes, just because we're going to glue it back together. So what I tend to do is just put a little mark here, and on the bottom of this side, a little mark there. So when I glue it, I just know it goes marked so together, I know it goes back together like that. We need to cut this hole out. Do that. Again, just cut it out, go down where the brick line is here, and just cut around the mark. So, when you get to the end, turn the hot wire cutter off so you don't accidentally melt it. Take the middle bit out, you've got this hole. Like so. And all you do then, get some glue and a bead along there, like so, and just glue it. Have your marks matching up, and up, glue it back on, and there you got a chimney. Leave that to dry. And we'll glue it onto the house. Dead easy part now. Got a chimney made. Got a house made. Glue them on. So then go on the back. So there's the front door. So yeah, it's going to go like there. Well, it's up to you what you pull it. I'm going to put mine there. Like it there. So 
all this case is doing really. A bit of glue on it. And put it on where you want it. Uh, we come down two shingles from the top. So you've got the ridge tile, this shingle, uh, this tile. Uh, and about an inch and a half, an inch and a half ish from the back. Put it on and allow it to dry. Your chimney. Let it dry and we're going to undercoat it and then get painting. I'm going to start the painting process by doing the uh, brickwork first and it's going to be based in this uh, paint here called Flintstone which is kind of like a uh, Dawnstone grey. These are about a quid each, these big tester pots great for terrain. If you watch a lot of my videos you'll see I do them a lot. Uh, what you have to do is on the doors and that go make sure you go in sort of return of the brickwork here. That's just case I've just given it a little, little dry brush with this stuff. On. Over all the brickwork in the chimney. Allow that to dry. Once the uh, actual base coat of the brickwork is dry, uh, we're going to do give it a little dry brush of this colour, which is called Dawn Cloud. Uh, this is a slightly lighter grey with a slight hint of brown in it, so it's quite nice. Breaks up uniform with a grey. Uh, have some on. These, I, if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll see I use these these a lot. Hopefully you've got the same equivalent if you're watching in a different country, but in the UK, Wilkinson's pound apart. Just gonna little dry brush of this. Brush from more of a wet brush again. The final grey we're gonna use is used on the uh, Minas Tirith board is this urban grey. This is a really, really light grey, so this is just not going to get used that much at all. You use it very sparingly. Sort of uh, probably not even going to be. Brickwork's now done. So we're going to move over to doing the woodwork and the roof is painted in exactly the same way. Start off with this dark brown, it's called Java Bean and this is just going to get painted all over the woodwork. So we're just going to paint the beams. Dries a lot darker when it comes out on camera. Sort of dries in a rhinox hide of darkness. And paint that every bit of wood and the roof and go just do a bit of final paint. One thing remember is to paint the underneath of the roof here. So roofs all brown, wood brown. Just got one final bit of paint stage of the painting. Just a dry brush over the wood with something called woodland fawn. This is like a carrot stone. Uh, my paints have gone a bit dry, which is not too bad for what we want to do. It's a dry paint at the moment. So get some on your brush. Uh, a bit like so. the roof what we're gonna do is you do it in upstrokes up and down strokes so that's coming out of the camera that's all right. I'll carry on 
come back when it's done and have a look. And this is it done. Roof's all done. Wood's done. And uh, let's set it up on a board and have a bit of a showcase. If you enjoyed this video please like and share it and subscribe to the channel for more great content. Game on and continue to support our wonderful hobby.